Several civil society groups have condemned the call for amnesty for bandits and kidnappers by several prominent Nigerians. They say that the rising insecurity in the country is proof that President Mohamed Buhari has failed in his responsibility to protect Nigerians. The group also is asking for a state of emergency to be declared over the current state of insecurity while calling on government at all levels to invest more in tackling insecurity condemn in the strongest terms possible what has now become the government standard state policy of using taxpayers' money to pay terrorists, thereby funding and encouraging terrorism and criminality. President Buhari and his government have failed in their primary duty under Section 14.2b of the 1999 Constitution, which is ensuring the security and welfare of the Nigerian people. It is the collective responsibility of all of us to ensure that all of us are safe in this country. And we call on government, instead of siphoning or wasting the so-called security board, let the governors use that money to reimpose and support the safety and security of Nigerians. The governors have the right, the state attorney generals have the right to prosecute anybody who is charged. And so why are the arrests? We've been calling, talking about headsmen or banditry, kidnappers and all. Where are those who have been arrested? And so a lot of the states that are having the issues of insecurity, that is so serious that many, many people cannot go to their homes anymore. Is that not enough to declare a state of emergency? We demand that there should be an end to impunity for abuse of power and sectionalism, particularly as it, as it is manifested through his appointments. And we demand that there should be balancing the needs for competence with the need for the federal character principle. In this way, the president will demonstrate that every part of Nigeria matters, as sectional appointments appear to also fuel sectional violence and also drive the competing sectional narratives. Uh, that is uh, undermining uh, security. Well, for more on this, we're being joined by the President, Yoruba Runu Leadership Forum, Aki Malalu. Thank you so much for joining us, Aki. Yeah, good evening. So you have been very vocal about the farmers' headers crisis in the country, but tonight let's talk about banditry. What do you make of the call for amnesty for bandits? Um, any solution that could help bring peace to this nation will be a welcome development. If we are going to move towards amnesty, we should draw a proper framework that is achievable in guaranteeing peace for our nation. But if we go the way of Niger Delta, where corruption took over the amnesty program, corruption took over the National uh, uh, Development uh, Commission of that region, uh, corruption equally took over the, uh, the Northeast Development Commission. This has to be different because we are dealing with stark illiterates. So what type of amnesty are we going to give them? And who should benefit from the amnesty program. They should be wholly and fully Nigerians, Fulani, Awusawas, or whatever tribes they are, but they must be Nigerians, not aliens. Okay, so um, just before you came on board, there was a group that was condemning in strong terms the call for amnesty, but obviously you believe there could be amnesty, but you're asking what type of amnesty, right? But let's move on. Not a single day passes without news of a kidnap or mass abduction. It is very worrisome and exhausting. Yeah. I don't know how you feel, but will this ever end? It will end. There are three things which leaders must do. Number one, whatever policies we have on ground must not be ridiculed, okay. must not be used for fortune getting. Because 
we have been we have been in these wars for over 10 years or so. Why are we not winning? Why are the other side winning their own wars? Our military, but you cannot say the same thing for the ragtag militias. Okay. So, so the reason why we are not winning our wars was because we have continually ridiculed the policies for winning wars. Okay, so, so you we can win our wars. You have mentioned two words, uh, the military and war, and it's triggering this next question, right? So for many, the, the change of the nation's service chiefs was supposed to work like magic. Is that your sentiment too? No. Uh, if it's going to work like magic, it will take new, new thoughts, new feelings, and new actions. And what, what that uh, uh, meant is uh, that the military must ask for the cooperation of communities to be able to win their wars. There are so many communities that have not been submerged or taken over by these criminal warlords. But now that Magashi had said that community could stand up to protect themselves, if we go further to identify his metaphor, we will say that he tried, having seen the pains that people have been subjected to, he offered a succor. But he could not he could not explain his thoughts very, very well. You... What I believe he was saying was that communities should give intelligence. Apart from that, they should equally do civil mobilization that can assist in intelligent gathering. Even if they are going to use weapons, it will be with the supervision of the military. So I, I was going to say, it, it looks like you are a mind reader, because I was just going to ask what you thought about what the minister had said. He, he said Nigerians should not be cowards. Now, does that equate to the government giving up? Is that the government, in a way, saying no. fight for yourself? I mean, No. No. In every war situation all over the world, one thing about war is that war Wars have never solved the need for war anywhere in the world. In war, women and children suffer. Mm. It is madness. But this defense minister is saying clearly and definite, definitively that to win this war, we, you have to partner with us. Communities have to engage in securing their environment and give quality intelligence to the military. It is now in the court of the military to reach out to community, okay, so train them on how to do civil mobilization, how to do what we call uh, resistant groups that we patrol forest areas and give intelligence reports to the military. Okay. If we do that, we will end this war in one year. I can tell you that. I can say that anywhere in the world. So you, you kept talking about intelligence and you kept saying the community should help with intelligence gathering. But are you satisfied, this is my final question, are you satisfied with the DSS and what it is doing as regards intelligence gathering? The DSS? Yes. If we are to measure the DSS, uh, at least when we look at the rampant detonation of bombs in Nigeria, that has stopped. Okay. One of the achievements of DSS. Okay. Secondly, they cannot do the military jobs, but give intelligence to military. How far they are at that job, I cannot speak for them. <laughs> but the effects of the war and the increase in banditry and insurgency clearly shows that the DSS is not doing enough. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.